Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cub Chat Live. We have a topic today and a guest who I'm not sure our guest has definitely never been on the show before. I'm not sure we've tackled this topic, but I am super excited to introduce you to Rory Connell, who is, like many of you, a Cub Master. Shout out to his pack, Pack 421. He's, of course, a parent. And also, like many of you, a lifelong volunteer. He has a lot of volunteer experience, and he's going to be sharing what he's learned in this organization and others today with us. We're talking about succession planning. We're going to talk about more about what that means in a second. But hey, Rory, thanks for being on the show. Good afternoon. Happy Friday. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to all of our viewers. Thank you all for commenting along. If you have questions as we go, just drop those in the comments. Also, shout out to... Our behind the scenes genius today, it's not behind the scenes Brian, who we, we des desperately miss, but it's behind the scenes Aaron. You all know him and he's doing a great job. So thanks, Aaron, for putting these comments up on the screen as we go. But I want to jump into this with Rory. Um, you know, you are Cub Master, your, your boots on the ground, you're in the weeds. Break it down for those of us who might be new leaders, new parents. What does succession planning even mean? just like the tv show right who's who's next in charge right. um you know right. succession planning is something that i think is often overlooked because in volunteer organizations you know no one's getting paid here right we're all volunteers and we're giving our time our extra time outside of our jobs so it's often overlooked and understated um but that's the plan for sustainability for your pack or your volunteer organization uh to keep moving forward when your time has come uh, and someone takes your place. So now we're going to talk a little bit about like, you know, what is your succession plan, but defining that again, your succession plan, it's like, Hey, you're in a leadership position. You're in some, some role within cub scouting. If somebody else has to walk in tomorrow and take your place, what tools are they going to need to know, know what to do? So, you know, like who does the succession planning? Uh, it's got to come from your top leadership, right? Um, in a, in a pack, it's your key three your uh, charter organization representative, if if they're involved, or you know, your committee chair and your cup master. But it's got to start with those two, three primarily, and then your committee, your active committee members. That's where it yeah. starts. That makes perfect sense. And we're going to see more so why. I also got to give a shout out, a special shout out to Rory, who really created the resource on this topic. And we're going to get to look at that today. After today's show is live, you'll be able to send out this video, rewind and check out you know, the text that we are going to be putting up on screen as we go. Quick shout outs to PAC uh, 208, PAC 916. Thank you all for watching. Hello, PAC 122, PAC 84, and the Longhouse Council. Yay. Thanks, Cub Scout leaders, for tuning in and and, and all scouting volunteers who are in here. Um, Marilou says she's on her way to set up a Baloo training. Yay. Shout out to your council, Golden Empire Council. Okay, back to succession planning. We're going to get into the meat of this presentation a little bit. Um, why exactly does succession planning matter? And I know we're talking about it in a Cub Scout environment, but I, I do think this is universally applicable. So I'll read the first sentence. A succession plan for leaders in a Cub Scout pack is important because it ensures continuity of leadership, stability, and long-term sustainability. That's the one thing there, right? How long is your pack going to be around? helps mitigate risk associated with the unexpected departures or transitions. So when someone takes a new job in Texas and they move out of Southern California, Jen, Sasha, if you're watching, we remember when that happened, uh, you know, how do we fill that role, right? That's why it's important. So qualify, it helps us identify key leaders and individuals ready to step up into key leadership roles needed within our packs or units. Uh, and then I have some bullet points there that are created continuity, you know, a succession plan ensures that there is a smooth transition of leadership when a current leader steps down, retire or move on to other roles. This continuity continuity prevents disruptions in a pack operations and maintains momentum in achieving pack goals. So continuity, pretty easy, uh, self explanatory, um, you know, refer back to this resource when you're looking at it development. This is a big one. Succession planning provides opportunities for leaders to develop and skill building among potential future leaders. It encourages ongoing training, mentorship, and leadership experiences to pre prepare individuals for future leadership roles. So this means, hey, who do we see as the lion leader, 
right? Who's the line leader that maybe in one or two years after they understand how scout book works and advancement works, they can step into a higher level role right and they can do more for us within the pack rather than just leading the den or maybe it's a parent within that den that has learned a little bit more about the program or shown interest but they're not ready to lead kids one-on-one we can develop them into other roles and responsibilities Uh, risk mitigation by identifying potential successors and grooming them for leadership roles a succession plan helps mitigate the risk associated with unexpected vacancies and leadership positions it reduces the likelihood of leadership crisis and ensures that the pack can continue to function effectively. This could be not just someone moving away, but I got into a car accident on the way to a pack meeting. Who's gonna step up and lead that pack meeting? Is my assistant cub master trained in my role? Can somebody step in when I'm sick? Or, you know, our advancement chair leaves and who's gonna go and go to the scout store and buy the pins, you know, we making sure we have that done. And then engagement and motivation, that is a huge one here. Involving leaders in a succession planning, in succession planning demonstrates a commitment to their growth and development, increasing their engagement and motivation to contribute to the PAC success. It fosters a culture of leadership, excellence and accountability within the PAC. So when we say, hey, you know, we need you to step into this role. This might mean you need to go to Baloo training. Uh, you might need to go to Foxfire University of Scouting, but they see and they want to be engaged further when we give them the opportunity to learn more so that's these are all the key reasons why it's really really important you know as we are sitting here going back to reason three i didn't even think about it it's not necessary we think of succession planning as like who's going to take over but it's also just like short term if, if somebody needs to sub in if you need to delegate a meeting to somebody have you equipped them with the resources and the um you know the legacy findings learnings that you have to be able to effectively do so we're getting a lot of comments about this. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> we're flat. We're flashing some of them up on screen, but I want to make sure I read some. Um, oh, Frank says uh, this is a great. Our pack is getting ready to go through this. Great, Frank. If you have any questions or feedback or input insights, let us know. We'd love to read those live on air. Um, Rob says great topic today. Tomorrow he gets to train new Cub Scout committee members. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. I'm, I'm sure Rob has a great succession plan. He's all over it. Also, he is a commissioner, so he definitely knows what he's doing. Um, Alex says, in general, we recruit most leaders in the younger dens to allow for shadowing before taking over. That's a great idea. We're going to get into some of the, the tactical side of, you know, what what do you do to do to, to plan for your predecessors here in a second? Um, I saw another I really want to read. Now I got to find it. Okay, Justin, I'm heading to Wood Badge weekend two, and my ticket revolves largely around succession planning for our pack. So this is really timely. Oh, you could use this resource when you go head over there. The, this link to this video will uh, still be up. So take it and run with it, with it if it'll help you at all, Justin. Um, okay, moving on. This is kind of what probably a lot of our leaders saw the topic today and were like, okay, so this is what they're looking for. How do we do it? How do we plan? So bullet point one, identify key leadership positions. You know, what makes your pack go? Obviously we need our key three, a COR. In some cases they're really engaged. In some cases they're writing a check and giving us a place to have a pack meeting. It just depends on where you're at and who you're involved with, but bless them for, you know, stepping up and supporting youth. Um, But we need to identify those key leadership positions. And a lot of that has to do with your pack's personality. Some packs camp a lot. Some packs are really into STEM, right? So you may need a STEM coordinator versus a quartermaster who, you know, keeps all the camping stuff together. So identify your key leadership positions. Obviously, you need your key three. You need your den leaders. You're going to need a treasurer, um, a secretary. So those are the things you need. But one of the things that is really, really critical is making sure that all, you fill out as many positions as possible, right? We want to fill out and give everyone a chance to participate. You need a fundraising chair. You need a membership chair, making sure that you have all those positions filled out and that one or a few handful of people are holding all the positions. Um, and then you assess your current leadership team, evaluate the strengths and skills and expertise of the current leaders and identify potential gaps or areas for development. So, hey, what are we working with now and where can we fill the gaps to fill out all those roles we've identified? 
that's uh, really important because just because I may be an accountant every day of my life, it doesn't mean I want to be the treasurer, right? And we want to give people the opportunity to do other things um, outside of what their day job may be when they volunteer. Uh, that's in any organization. Um, but make sure you know what you're working with to start, and then you build your wish list of things that you need. Uh, identify potential successors. Identify potential successors for key leadership positions based on their skills, commitment, and suitability for the role. I'm going to give a perfect example. Last weekend, our pack was camping at uh, Camp Emerson, second oldest Boy Scout camp in the country. Uh, and we do an outdoor movie night. And for some reason, everyone's phone had an iOS update and we're all scrambling. You know, the boys all want to watch, you know, this movie and they're all ready. We've got the campfire set up. They're doing s'mores and we can't get the movie to play. And out of nowhere, it's like a, a guardian angel. This lion dad shows up and he's like, oh, I work in the tech industry. And five minutes later, he's streaming a video through his his Starlink and uh, satellite that he's got on his truck. And I'm like, wow who is this guy? Where did he come from? And right away, like the conversation 10 minutes later is that guy's our guy. He's, he's going to become a cup master. You know, right away we're having the conversation, um, <clears throat> provide training and development, offer training and mentorship and leader development opportunities. Um, you know, I'm very blessed that I've had mentors, you know, one of the people that's kept me involved was my scout master, right. Um, and mentoring those coming in, um, is really, really a big deal. You can't just do your own thing. I encourage den leaders to make sure they're looking back at the rank behind them every year. Hey, what can you do to help support that? When we do Pinewood Derby every year, right? Our, uh, our bears host our Pinewood Derby. Well, every year when the bears are doing it, the wolf leader is there watching them so they can take that over the next year. So provide training, make sure they're going to blue, make sure they're doing wood badge, University of Scouting if you have it. Uh, transition plans, develop transition plans for key leadership transitions. So in our pack, our bylaws state that we can only hold a committee position for three years. So we're rotating people through. So that's built into our, our bylaws and you can do it differently, but that's part of our transition plan. So every three years, we're making sure someone's moving on to a new position and they're not staying in that position. Uh, so we don't have dead space when they leave. Uh, review and update regularly. That's the conversation that's tough for some of us. Um, it could be a once a year meeting, but it needs to be something that happens. Um, a lot of times we get into leadership roles and sometimes people, people can take that on to a, a higher level than it you know, sometimes we, we get that leadership and we really embrace it and we don't want to let it go. And that's why having the conversation all the time prevents that. I know that there's someone in a pack that's watching right now that feels like, oh my goodness, this guy doesn't want to give up power. He doesn't want to let go. And that's why keeping this conversation out and open and transparent all the time prevents that from happening. And that's the next point, promote transparency and communication. You've got to talk about these things regularly. Um, and it's gotta be a conversation. Who's the next person? You know, I know that I'll be gone from my pack in February when my son bridges out to Boy Scouts. And that's a conversation we're having now. Um, and, you know, we're doing things like uh, parent surveys. You know, every year we do a parent survey. What are you good at? What do you want to do? And we're making sure that the parents are part of that conversation, the leaders and the committee. And it's a constant conversation. And then, uh, you know, celebrate those transitions. Um, make sure that when someone leaves, you recognize them because kids love patches, but adults in scouting love them just as much. And we want to make sure people are recognized for the, you know, the time that they're giving our time is our most valuable resource. And when people give their time to our children, we should celebrate that and we should recognize them for that. And I think that encourages other people to participate. So, uh, You've inspired a lot of good conversation and a question. I want to see if we can get your input on, but First up, Brian says every year he hands off all his meeting plans to the next younger den leader. It gives them a bunch of ideas. Um, Frank says that they're about to go through this. Thanks, Frank, for watching. Okay, Jeremy has a question, and maybe you have some insight for him. He's saying, you know, we struggle just to have an, enough leaders to lead dens, much less backups in a succession plan. A any tips for him? Um, I can give you a prime example. 
So this year I took on, I was my son's, uh, we, you know, I was his den leader from start to up until his we blows year. And then I, you know, stepped away from that role because I became the scout master and I didn't, you know, I wanted to give the opportunity for her to be really focused on the den, but we had a wolf den that didn't have a leader and I was leading other people's children. And I've, and I'll be perfectly honest. It was like, wow, you know, these people are just sitting here and they're watching me lead their kids. And they were kind of, you know, you sometimes you feel like people treat you like a paid vault paid employee when you're a volunteer. And that's perfectly natural uh, for you to feel that way. Um, Most people don't have that intention. It's just not something they necessarily want to do. How did I get their parents to step up and take on the role? I forced them to. I said, hey, this is this is kind of where it ends. And I'm going to start withdrawing. You know, I will lead you to water, but I can't force you to drink. But if I there's no water there, you're going to have to find it somewhere else. So we kind of had to slowly wean them off of me being their leader and force someone to step up, you know, and I'm not going to have two meetings a month because that's what you want. I'm only going to have one because that's all I can do because I still have another pack and I still have my own child to worry about. And they wanted more. And I said, well, if you want more, you got to do more. And the parents in that den are now thriving and they're doing great. And everyone all the parents in that den now are participating um, on multiple levels, whether it's at the den level or you know, they're just now stepping up and wanting to do committee level positions. So you yeah, kind of have to force it t- sometimes. It's, yeah, it is well, the really precedent you're setting. It's kind of the same as having like that three year limit. It's like this is we, we move on with our kids mm-hmm. usually. So, you know, I'm not going to be here. Somebody's going to have to step up and take this over. Great, great advice. Rob chimes in. One of the most important things you can do as a pack leader is to get to know the parents of the scouts. It makes it easier to get them to step up and take the leadership position when you know them and they are not a stranger. That's an excellent Absolutely. point. Absolutely. You know, as a as a cub master or a committee member, you should always be engaging new parents. Um, and one thing I absolutely do not let happen at pack meetings is myself or any committee member talk and openly address the parents. And if they're on their phones, I will call them out. Do not be afraid to call out the scrolling parent. It may rough, ruffle some feathers, but they will start paying attention and they will start engaging more because a lot of times, you know, we're in volunteer positions and people get off work, they pick up their kid, they take them to dinner or they make them dinner and then they just want to drop them off and, you know, decompress on their phone. And I get that but you can't allow that to happen. You have to engage and communicate with them and force them to listen, to participate. And force them to build a relationship. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, Carrie says she's got a great, some great feedback and a question. Um, I did a survey to my lion parents this year, asking them to select a meeting to assist with. They filled out a Google survey. I met them where they were. Some did a whole meeting. Some just helped with an activity. Now I can just ask people to help out and everyone is happy to jump in. That comes uh, into play too with like the pack resource survey that I think Anthony talks about when he comes on. Oftentimes, you you know what parents' interests are, their expertise. You can call on them when a relevant meeting comes up. Carrie also asked, "Do you have any tips for onboarding a new lion leader?" And maybe we take that even like especially with a, you know a succession plan for a new for a new lion leader. Um, so tips for onboarding a, a lion leader. Um, we have this thing called the ligers. Um, and they're the ligers, you know, the first few months, that's what we've learned. Um, we put the lions and tigers together for the first couple months and let them meet together. So that person that was there the year before that was onboarded and had no clue can help shadow that person because they're going to have the most relevant current experience of the struggles of being a new leader. And typically, you know, those those tiger leaders are already paired up and already now working with the other den leaders and active in the community for them to have that role to shadow them in that first year leadership. So we do the liger route. That's how we help onboard them and get them up to speed. How long do you do that, Rory? Um, you know, it depends on how many new scouts you have. You know, last year, I think we were, we did it for two to three months. And this year we're a little longer because we have less scouts um, in our alliance. Um, And it makes sense, you know, to have more of them together at that same age. But that's, uh, you know, just go with the flow. You don't have to put a set number on it. Just what works for you and your your group. Yeah, it definitely probably depends on the on the den size. 
Um, I imagine that's really fun for the youth too at first, just to have some more scouts around them and, and you know, we're the bigger kids, we're the new kids. We want to, you know, aspirational grow up to be tigers. So I think that that's cool or grow into tigers. Um, I don't think tigers are quite grown up. So yeah, I'm going to redact that. Uh, so we, wrapping up here a little bit, you brought up a, a great point before we went live. Is there anything like otherwise well-meaning leaders might do to, you know, like stall a succession plan or they don't create a succession plan because they are, you know, making some kind of a, a like a well-meaning error? Um, I'm guilty of this myself. And you can ask my wife. She'll tell you all the time. I... I think everybody should know what I'm thinking. You know, and we have to communicate. Number one, we've got to communicate what's going on and we've got to ask other people for help because sometimes we just get in the rhythm of doing everything that we don't ask for help and we limit the opportunities that other people could have to offer, you know, skills and opportunities other people may have to offer us. So if you're that leader that has a million titles next to your name, how well are you really doing those things? You cannot do all of those titles at once and you cannot be effective carrying all those positions within your Packer committee. So, you know, maybe shed a couple titles um, and find someone to take them. That's something I would really encourage people to do because I, I know I'm guilty of it myself. I just, and then I get frustrated and I shut down and I don't communicate when I feel like I'm doing it all alone. Um, that's, that's in any part of my life. Um, so, Make you're sure you're speaking, not just you're speaking to me right now. This is how I feel. I think <laughs> I just went through like a therapy session. Yeah. So just make sure you're not, you know, overwhelming yourself with all the responsibility because you don't feel like anyone else wants to help. Um, I'm, I'm going to give another example. At our camp out this weekend, I have a parent who's been around for a few years now. His son is one of the most brilliant kids I've ever met in my life. And dad's a soccer parent. You know, he's a soccer coach. So those pesky sports schedules, you know, I, I don't get enough of him to see his ability to what he has to offer. And he's like, hey, man, what do you need help with? Like 10 times over the last weekend at the camp. And I'm like, dude, just just go enjoy your kid. You know, we got this. We've been planning this. And I didn't give him the opportunity. And next thing you know, I you know started dumping meat on the grill because we were doing tacos. And this dude's like, get out of my way, man. You get to go enjoy your kid now. And he just he he crushed it. You know, he made so many tacos and he had so much fun. And it's like that guy offered to help and I just didn't want to take the time to explain it or ask for help. And that was my fault. Right. So just recognizing ourselves in that moment and making sure that we're asking for help is a huge thing. I find that exact situation with various volunteer roles, scouting volunteer roles. And even with my husband, this, like when someone wants to help or they express, they want to help exactly like you say, like in my head, I'm like, they don't understand. They don't understand X, Y, Z. I, you know, and just dismiss it. Like, it just it's almost like parenting leading break it down for them and and that you kind of break down the first big step to that hurdle that's keeping you from letting someone else in so what a great touch point there um jesse says self-evaluation is essential for growth um also committee parent meetings are essential for our planning yeah and i mean having your parents as part of the committee i think is one big step to engaging them and making them realize like hey you are the leadership pool here uh, and Cub Scouts. Um, all of your comments are wonderful. A couple more pack shout outs, pack 1993. That's Jeremy's pack, uh, pack 799, pack 215, pack 78 and 89. Thank you all for watching. Now we shared a resource throughout the show that I just know a lot of you are like, Hey, how do we get our hands on that? Well, the answer is this video for now, at least we'll try to find a way to make this available to you. But, um, and, and we also all owe Rory a big thank you for putting this together. Cause this is his creation. This is not something that came out of, um, you know, like the, well, it did come out of scouting. It did come out of the BSA. It just came out, came from a volunteer. Um, if you want to access this for now, use this video after we're live, you'll be able to share this video. It's on YouTube. It's on all of the scouting Facebook pages, um, and you are able to email this out. You're able to tag somebody in the comments who you think might uh, find this video worthwhile. We are up a, upon our last few minutes here, so get those last comments and shout outs in, everybody. Um, oh, Brian has a question. How do folks get parents to show up to parent committee meetings? I think he's probably posing that to other people who are watching today's show, but if you have any input, Rory, feel free to chime in. 
Uh, so there's two things that that are always time, hard, right? People that have multiple kids or childcare. How do we have, you know, so if we can provide a location where we have childcare, you're going to get higher, you know, rate of return uh, and food. <laughs> childcare and food. Those are the two things that seem to incentivize people. Hey, if I can have a, if I can do something on an evening where I can feed the people and maybe their kids, you know, let's do pizza and have one of the older kids, um, whether it's a, a den chief or someone, watch the kids in a non-official manner um, and the kids can play in the backyard. Um, I think child care and food are probably the two keys for success there because those are hard things to do on a weeknight or even a weekend. And depending on the age of the kids, even just like coloring pages and activity for them, work finds a table where they can sit. Um, Rob's got a great point called a parent meeting, not a leader or committee meeting. Breaking yeah. down the terms we use, I think that can be very powerful. Uh, there's no doubt you need to be there if it's a parent meeting and you're a parent, I would think. And Luke echoes you as well, Rory. If you have older scouts that can look over the Cubs, that's helpful. Also very fun for the Cubs and kind of a contingency plan for your scouting, um, you know, incentive to keep going and scouting if you're youth. Uh, I'm going to make sure I'm not missing any comments here. Rory, is there anything else that we've missed that you want to make sure we we cover today before we let you go? Uh, I just got to give my shout outs, I guess. You know, um, oh, yeah. first and foremost, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that I, I'm the the cub master of the, the pack that my parents, you know, started uh, 35 years later. So that's a testament to succession. Um, so my mom and dad got a shout out to them. And then, you know, Mike Downs from the Inland Empire Council, my scout master who, uh, you know, just still dragging me through this journey and pushing me to be here and Gary Dufresne, uh, another lifelong person. And then the whole committee of our pack, um, pack 421 Corona, you guys are awesome. Uh, I love working with you guys and it's been great. And I, I can't wait to see who our next Cub Master is. I will say I want to be in your pack. It sounds very fun, very organized. And like, there's a great culture. I can just tell that the, the uh, you know, like there's relationships built amongst the adults as well, based on how you describe it. And I think that that's what makes for a really successful pack. So great job, Rory. Shout out to you again. Shout out to you for creating this resource. Yeah, definitely. You're welcome. Um, Luke says, if your older youth look after Cubs, can that be a service project? It probably depends on how you structure it, Luke. But also, I just have to make sure that we say you still got to follow youth protection guidelines, you know, keep those in place. It's not like go send the kids off with a youth and it's not a scouting event. It is a scouting event. So definitely follow youth protection. Um, I think that's it. If you want to watch past episodes of Cub Chat Live, you can do that on the blog, on the Aaron on Scouting blog. You can also watch them in the playlist wherever you're watching this right now. And a reminder, we do have a podcast. So if it is hard for you to sit down and watch the videos one week, go to Apple Podcasts, go to Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, this podcast exists. So you can check it out, subscribe. Um, and Mary Lou echoes, yeah, we ditched the leader meeting and committee meeting years ago. Good job. Everybody, thank you for watching. We will be back next Friday. Um, it should be a really good episode. And then the next week, we will be live again from National Annual Meeting. We'll be in person with some of our, our guests that we can only talk to remotely. It's going to be super exciting. But beyond all that, Rory, thank you so much for taking the time. Please come back. We love having, like, like I said, a real boots on the ground volunteer here on the show. Love to be back. Thank you so much. Everybody, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to catch next week's episode. Same time, same place. And let us know how we're doing at go.scoutingmagazine.org slash rate cub chat. We love feedback and ideas for new episodes. And you can visit blog.scoutingmagazine.org slash cub chat live for all our past video episodes. You can see us live, except it's recorded, but it was live. Okay. See you next week.